Welcome to the second half of the Joe Walsh Show. Here's the question. Is Senator Ted Cruz really in trouble in Texas? Does he have much to worry about this November? Let's get that answer. I'm really happy to be joined by Matthew Makowiak. He's the president of the Potomac Strategy Group. He knows all things Texas and Republicans. Uh, Matthew, my friend, thank you for taking some time. So let me start very broadly with that question. I've seen too many polls of recent vintage that show this race, Ted Cruz against Beto O'Rourke, much closer than I thought. Is he in trouble? I don't think he's in trouble. I think we're looking at a race that will be closer than it should be. It'll be closer than people expect. You know, remember Trump won Texas by about 9% uh, in November 2016. No one could have predicted that Beto O'Rourke would outraise Ted Cruz, and that is exactly what's happening. Not only is Beto O'Rourke outraising Ted Cruz, he's outraising every Democratic Senate candidate in the country. That's how strong his fundraising has been. He's also spending a lot of money, and Joe, I know you know this from your career in Congress. Uh, last quarter when Beto raised over, I think, $10.6 million, he spent $6 million. And you can only uh, really use wow. that, that cash on hand. So he does have a high burn rate. But look, uh, Beto uh, is overperforming. Do I think this is a margin of error race? No. If you look at the poll that came out today, it had Cruz up 49, 45. Uh, it had basically the same number of Democrats as it did Republicans, which is not what the midterm electorate looks like in Texas. So these polls, I think, are, are not uh, a clear reflection of what the electorate will be in the fall. But it's a volatile election uh, environment, and O'Rourke's overperforming. Cruz, I think, is, is has not yet defined O'Rourke, but I expect that to begin right after Labor Day. And I just think fundamentally O'Rourke's positions, uh, whether it be being open to abolishing ICE, whether it be supporting sanctuary cities, uh, whether it be uh, expressing a, a willingness to support impeaching Trump, which he did on, on Showtime's The Circus several months ago, uh, being basically in line with Bernie Sanders' uh, policies. That's not where Texas is. That may work in a liberal state, might even work in a swing state. It's not going to work in Texas. So ultimately, I think Cruz is going to be fine, but the margin will likely be 5 to 8 percent, I suspect, at the end of the day. You, you mentioned O'Rourke's fundraising numbers, and you're right. They're staggering. Why, why has he been able to raise so much money? It's two things. It's a great question. One, uh, his message appeals to the net roots of the Democratic Party. He's running on a progressive platform. He's doing, in many ways, what Bernie Sanders did nationally in the presidential campaign. So that's number one. Uh, number two, he has focused, ex actually there are three reasons. Number two, he's fo focused exclusively on small dollar donors, not taking PAC money, not doing a lot of major donor fundraising. As you know, at the federal level, there's a maximum limit that an individual can give of $2,700. Yeah. So you have to have a massive number of donors, and he's he's done that. Uh, but third, and this is important as well, uh, if you are running against Ted Cruz and you're a Democrat, that is an easy thing to raise money on because Ted Cruz is hated by a lot of Democrats. It's just like when Republicans used to run against Ted Kennedy uh, in, in recent elections. They used to raise national money in a race that was not winnable because Republicans hated Ted Kennedy. So that's part of it, too. Ted Cruz is effectively helping Beto work raise money from liberals because he's been such a strong conservative senator. What kind of a campaign so far has Cruz run, and what does he need to do these final couple of months to make sure he does win? Great question. So uh, Cruz is obviously uh, has had two very successful campaigns. He came out of nowhere to, to win the U.S. Senate seat against the sitting lieutenant governor in a primary and then a primary runoff six years ago. And whatever you think of his presidential campaign, he finished second out of 17 candidates and came pretty close to uh, winning the nomination uh, from Trump had a couple things gone differently. So what they're doing, I think, right now is they're doing everything they can to maximize the time they have in state. The challenge is the Senate is spending a lot of time in session. As you know, in August, they're spending three of the four weeks in session. Beto O'Rourke is in the House. The House is in recess, so he's traveling the state aggressively. Uh, September, Cruz will be in D.C. almost the entire month. You have the, the spending deadline at the end of the year. So part of the challenge is that Cruz is spending a lot of time doing his day job as a United States senator, and that's preventing him from campaigning as aggressively as O'Rourke is doing. But look, the single most important thing Cruz can do is define Beto O'Rourke. And he doesn't have to lie about him. He doesn't have to be overly nasty. All he has to do is make sure voters understand what Beto O'Rourke 
Bloomberg's positions are. He's not running as a moderate Democrat. He's not running as a blue dog Democrat. He's really running as a left-wing liberal Democrat, progressive, perhaps even a, really a socialist in terms of some of his views. Uh, and again, that is not where the majority of Texans are. And so I think as Cruz begins to define him after Labor Day, makes clear what the contrast is, I think Republicans are going to come home and I think O'Rourke's negatives are going to go up. And ultimately, that's going to create a problem for Beto O'Rourke. Matthew, what's the what's the Trump factor in Texas and the Trump Cruz relationship? How how helpful or active might Trump be or have to be in this race? Great question. Also, uh, the president, uh, or excuse me, Senator Cruz said a week ago that he would welcome the president coming to Texas, and so I actually do expect the president to come here to help Senator Ted Cruz. Look, that relationship was obviously strained uh, during the convention in, in uh, what it was that August or July of 2016. The relationship is very strong now. Cruz has been one of Trump's top allies. He's been very effective helping confirm judges. Uh, helping you know move a legislative agenda through the Senate, given the, the, the difficult math that, that exists there. He's supported the president in a lot of ways. He's been very helpful behind the scenes, working with the White House. So mm -hmm. that relationship is very strong, actually. So I do think the president will come in. Look, President Trump comes here. It's going to motivate Democrats as well. It's going to motivate Hispanics and and women and you know women in urban yeah. areas, things like that. So there's there there are some potential risks, but but fundamentally, Trump is still in pretty strong shape in Texas, and he's a net positive for Cruz, which is why I think Cruz will bring him in. So you you see Cruz winning. It's going to be closer than a lot of people think. Maybe this is a difficult question to answer, but. What would make this race, I mean, almost a dead heat? What does O'Rourke need to have happen to, to really, I mean, have a real shot at winning this thing? This is the thing that's so puzzling, is that if O'Rourke was trying to win, he would be moving back to the middle, going after independents and soft Republicans. Um, and he's not doing yeah. that, not in any meaningful way that I've seen. He's continuing to run to the left on issues. So I'm very puzzled as to why he's doing that uh, from a just, a just a path to victory standpoint. If you had to guess, uh, Matthew, if yeah. you had to guess, if you had to guess, why is he doing that? He's a true believer. Uh, it's the only thing that makes any sense. I think also he recognizes that he's raised money from the net roots of the Democratic Party, and they're pretty clear what they want, yeah. you know, their candidates and their elected officials to do. It's not to move to the middle on, you know, an issue like maybe the Second Amendment or life or something like that. So he's really not moved to the middle in any in any meaningful way. Uh, what would make the race close? You know, if Cruz made a huge mistake, if there was a huge controversy. One of the interesting factors here is Cruz has actually uh, called on, on O'Rourke to do five debates, and he's offered five debates, the first of which I think is a week from this Friday. Uh, usually, front runners don't don't want debates. Cruz wants a right. debate for the reason I said earlier, and that is he wants to prosecute the case against O'Rourke that he is out of the mainstream with Texas voters on issues. And I think that O'Rourke is not prepared to debate Ted Cruz. Of all the things you can say about Ted Cruz, he is one of the the, the finest debaters we've seen in politics in the in the modern era. So I think he's going to really nail Beto down on what he stands for. If he's for Medicare for all. That's $32 trillion over 10 years. How do you pay for it? Cruz is going to hammer him on issues like that, trying to see where the, where, where the math adds up, where he is on these issues, and show that he's outside the mainstream. Matthew, it's, it's a fascinating race, and, and I loved what you said. It's, it's, it's fascinating that O'Rourke has hewed to the left. He's stayed to the left, and in Texas, Boy, that's 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 a real tough play. Hey, thanks so much. Great stuff, Matthew. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. The problem of female genital mutilation, the problem of Islam coming up next.